I think being smart is cool. Think about someone like Sher- Oh, wait, why does this seem kind of familiar? Oh, that's right, I already did this intro before for a dumb anime. Well, you know what I'm going to say next then. Smart people are cool, big brain equals cool, etc, etc. But this time, I wanted to talk about an actually smart anime with smart characters, who are also some of the biggest idiots out there. Listen to this plot. A few girls are really bad at school, and so they get a guy to tutor them, and they fall in love with that guy. I am of course talking about not quintessential quintuplets, not today at least, and I'm talking about Bokuben. And I know that there are many comparisons that can be made between the two, but I think Bokuben has some things that quintessential quintuplets lacked. For example, the MC in Bokuben isn't a complete aloof asshole, and the characters feel somewhat real. As real as you can get from a harem anime, but they face some real life challenges that real people face. Anyways, Bokuben is really good, and my name is Nobo Okoa, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why. Watch till the end for my potentially controversial ranking of the girls, and if you come to agree with me, or just enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe. I'm really close to my goals of becoming eligible for the YouTube Partner Program, and it's really crazy to think about, but it's all thanks to you guys. I hope you enjoy this video too, and there will be spoilers for the end, so here's your warning. Bokutachi wa benkyou ga dekinai, or Bokuben for short translates to we can't study, or we are bad at studying, or academics. Bokuben is a harem high school romance manga later adapted to an anime about our hero, Nariyuki, and five other heroines. Nariyuki is like... the unsalted boiled chicken and rice of protagonists. He doesn't really have that much flavor or texture, but he has five different sauces of different color and flavor to accompany him. The five girls are the real stars of the show, and Nariyuki worked in perfect harmony with them, giving each of them the spotlight that they deserve. He is really similar to Rentaro from 100 Girlfriends in that sense, which is a huge compliment. Rentaro was a really cool dude, and I am frothing in the mouth just thinking about him, but he never really had that much of a personality. He was above average at everything and was super chill, but other than that, he didn't really have anything special about him. However, he works super well because of the synergy he has with the girls, and that Nariyuki does almost as well. While Nariyuki does have his pervy asshole moments, it isn't the most obnoxious I've seen. Oh, and also he is poor, like, obnoxiously so, and it doesn't really do anything for the story, so it comes off as more of an overused unfunny bit. So, to describe Nariyuki, I would probably say that he is the pillow swine to Rentaro's mamo swine and Futaro's swineub. I don't know why I chose those characters specifically, but I'm trying to say that Nariyuki is in between those two. Let me explain. The reason I didn't like Futaro as much was because he was a creepy asshole way more than Nariyuki. Nariyuki and Futaro are both motivated heavily by money, but Nariyuki quickly became more involved with them as a tutor and wanted to help them for reasons outside of money. Nariyuki's dead father told him that it is frustrating for people to not be able to do things and that Nariyuki should be understanding of those people. And Nariyuki is very understanding of the girl's inaptitudes for those subjects. Speaking of his dead dad, I appreciated the fact that they didn't really make a big deal out of his death and backstory. Anyways, Nariyuki's way of teaching is way more hands-on, without being hands-on them. Well, except for that one time when the lights go out, or the accidental boob eats. Okay, yeah, he isn't much better in that regard. So, yeah, this show also has his pervy moments, and I still didn't like it much, but it wasn't too intrusive and was rare enough. Where Futaro ends up after he grows is exactly the same place that Nariyuki was in the beginning. Nariyuki was always understanding and kind, while Futaro grew up to be understanding and nice. And yes, in that sense, Futaro has more growth, but I think it is still better for someone to start off good. If you were a bad person, and grew to be a good one, versus you were always a good person, I think the one who was always a good person is favorable. And while we are on the topic of Futaro, let me know if I should do a video dedicated to quintessential quintuplets. Futaro has been a hot topic in the comments recently. Anyways, now that you know a little bit about our protagonists, let's get to the saucy part. There are five girls in the show, and two of them were introduced in the first episode. They made a really good decision with that because if they introduced a third girl in that episode, the pacing would have been really messed up. There would be too much in that one episode and too little in the following ones, so a really good catch from them. The first two girls introduced are Rizu Ogata and Fumino Furuhashi. The two are both geniuses in their respective subjects, with Rizu's being math and science and Fumino's being literature. 
And they aren't subtle about them being geniuses. The reason I am okay with this, but not for something like Your Lie in April or The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten, is because of self-awareness. Yes, my favorite phrase. They don't try to make it a big plot point, and it is supposed to be exaggerated, and it does that just fine. But even though they are such geniuses, ironically, they want to study each other's subjects, which they are god-awful at. Let's start with Rizu. She is a scientific smart character, often robotic and clueless about social cues. But surprisingly, she is not an asshole or a tsundere. She is just socially awkward, and that ties back around to the fact that she is horrible at literature and understanding them. Because in order to understand the book, you need to understand people and what they should feel. Even the way she talks is robotic. If you don't know, she speaks in polite form, or kegel. Kegel is used in formal situations with people you aren't acquainted with or someone you need to show respect to. That is also the type of language that you will learn from Duolingo or your Japanese class in an American high school. But you certainly wouldn't talk like that, especially to your friends. It comes off as awkward and kinda robotic. And those are the exact features of Rizu. She just isn't good at people. Even though she was initially a little bit mean to Nariyuki, that is still very understandable. She has had many people abandon her and tell her to give up on her dreams and pursue her talent. She is just frustrated and expects the same treatment from Nariyuki. Furuhashi is the exact opposite. She's great with people. That is even shown by the more friendly, casual way she talks, and in return, she's great at literature and writing. Furuhashi is a nice, chill girl that everyone likes. And her skills with people shine when she quickly picks up on Rizu and Uruka's feelings towards Naruyuki and ultimately helps him. However, she's just terrible at math and science because there is no way to understand them emotionally and why they are the way they are. And I just love when she's sleeping in the background sometimes, it's just so goddamn cute. Another thing I liked about her is that she didn't seem to be a primary love interest, at least at the beginning. I mean, after all, she is helping two other girls get with him. I love the dynamic between her and the other girls where she is the only one who is aware of their feelings. She also definitely seems to like Naruyuki, but due to her knowledge of social norms, she doesn't let it interfere with their interactions. But she also sometimes thinks about it too emotionally and not logically. For example, when Rizu's glasses broke and had to use a different pair, she was squinting and had a mean look on her face. Furuhashi assumes that it has to do something with emotions rather than just that she could be having trouble seeing. And this is consistent with her incompetence in the more logical math and science. The two girls both want to pursue the subjects because of somewhat naive dreams they have. Rizu loves board games and card games, but is just horrible at them. She goes about them in a mathematical way and tries to calculate each probability. But that can only take you so far. In her realization that you need to know people in order to be good at them, she pursues psychology. Furuhashi wants to study astronomy when she grows up because her mother, who passed away due to an illness, also did and she found a star. Furuhashi's dream is to one day find that same star. And yes, those dreams are both somewhat childish and naive. But doesn't that go for everyone? Who grows up thinking that they want to work a regular office job? Who grows up thinking that they want to work multiple minimum wage jobs? Everyone at some point has some childish, somewhat stupid dreams that they just want to chase. That is why I started this YouTube channel. I love doing it, but do I expect to make a full-time living out of this? No. But I sure as hell will try. And I get the feeling of being stuck because you just can't do something. Trust me, I know, I've played online games all my life. But even if it is something like video games and YouTube, I'm sure so many of you have dreams that you want to pursue. And I know it isn't exactly easy to do so, but I highly suggest you at least try your best. This show really motivates you with all those gorgeous anime titties and more importantly, how hard they try. The next girl is Uruka, and I honestly think that she might ironically be the weakest character, even though she is technically the strongest. Wow, lots of irony in this video. 
Uruka Takamoto is a swimmer prodigy and also Naruyuki's friend from middle school. She had a crush on him for a long time, but was always too scared to do anything about it. She puts her all into swimming and so she is terrible at anything remotely academic. She is a Genki girl, but that's pretty much it. Her motivation for swimming is that she just loves it. And while that is a legit reason, there's not much for me to get attached to. She is just what she is on the surface level. And speaking of surface, those tan lines make me... <laughs> okay, let me go lock my door real quick. I might need some time alone. But even then, she isn't a bad character. She is just a Genki girl. And because she is just a Genki girl, she is fun. She makes the mood Genki. <laughs> And finally, her ahoge isn't annoying and is actually used right. The aho in ahoge means stupid or idiot, and they're supposed to be used for stupid characters and bakaderes to make them seem more lighthearted. And Uruka is all of that. She owns that ahoge. She embodies it even. The show continues on with the three of them for quite a bit. We slowly see progress in their academics, which is just satisfying every time, and we also see some development in their relationships. While what happens is mostly just slice of life bullshit with not much meaning to it, these moments get you more and more attached to the characters, and often, it is worth to give the characters time to do meaningless nonsense in order to enhance the things that need to make sense. For example, we get introduced to Sekijo, who is self-proclaimed to be Rizu's rival in science. She also seems to have a crush on Rizu, and I don't really know if she canonically likes her or if it is just god tier Yuri baiting. She was pretty meaningless to the overall story, but she was fun and we learned a little more about Rizu. The next girl we get introduced to is Kirisu, Sensei. Yes, she is a teacher at the school and also a love interest. Kirisu was Furuhashi and Rizu's original tutor, but she told them off and advised them to stick to what they are talented at. She's a stoic, emotionless, seemingly pessimistic person. But that pessimism doesn't come from nowhere. Being older and more mature, she had a personal experience with pursuing foolish dreams rather than a safe future. Kirisu, as a young girl, was a figure skater. However, figure skating careers can't last long due to quickly deteriorating physical condition and financial situation. But because she spent all her time in that, she is now a mere teacher. So she isn't as nihilistic as she seems and is rather caring for their future. Other than that, she has some fun traits. She is mostly mature and understanding, with the ability to come to reasonable compromises even within a disagreement. She is chill and doesn't see Naruyuki as a love interest. Yet. You know, all the traits of a functioning adult. <laughs> Then, of course, anime doesn't believe in non-romantic relationships between members of the opposite sex, so we get this moment a few seconds later. Also, did she just say bungler? Honestly, I liked her character, but she was the weakest part of the show. It was just kind of weird for Kirisu to be a legitimate love interest. And I know the legal age is different in Japan yada yada, but in any country or any law, a relationship between a student and teacher should strictly be pedagogical. Domestic girlfriend is an exception of course, and I might make a video on it soon and give the exact reason why. But today we are talking about Bokuben, and I'm not disturbed by their age difference, because laws are different there and it's seen as normal. 18 might be legal in the US, 16 in Japan, 40 years old in, I don't know, Mars or something. But the point is that it's subjective and that you shouldn't look down on countries because of it. And again, the problem isn't the age difference. The problem is that she is a teacher and he is a student. I was okay with Hahari and Rentaro because despite their age difference, it was 1. legal and 2. supposed to be a ridiculous gag manga. This big turn on for some horny shits out there isn't really a turn off for me, as she is pretty clearly not the main girl. But even just a concept of her being one of the choices is a tad bit weird. The final girl is arguably my favorite, and if not, is at least a top 5 contender. Of course, the purple haired lolly bimbo senpai. 
She was just fun. And the show doesn't suggest a real romantic relationship between the two, which is very refreshing. She kinda reminds me of Taiga from Toradora, but she isn't a toxic bitch. Actually, I would compare her more to Ami, who, if you recall from the Toradora video, got an overall thumbs up from me. Kominami is actually almost exactly how I described her from earlier. We get introduced her with Naruyuki mistaking her as a child, and she starts being a passive-aggressive bitch in a non-harmful, funnily petty way. And if I had to describe Kominami again, I would say... She simply is. Again, she doesn't seem like a love interest and is mostly just there for fun. And she is even more fun because she works in a maid cafe and has a completely different persona there. Anyways, she also sucks at school but wants to be a doctor, so she gets help from Naruyuki. Again, I can't emphasize this enough, but she is just cool and I really like that. Even her somewhat tsundere tendencies aren't obnoxious and annoying and add a bit of comic relief in this already comedy show. We keep seeing slow development through lighthearted, fun, but mostly meaningless slice of life events, and we eventually end the first season and move on to the next. Even during the second season, nothing really happens, nor do we get a new character, but the end of the second season has the ending. There's a school festival thing happening because every romance anime needs it. The school festival has a fireworks show at the end with a superstition that says that you will end up with whoever you are touching during it. But before that, I wanted to mention something. You remember that dance that I made fun of during the Osamake video? Yeah, something similar happens here where Kirisu and Uruka are doing a magic girl idol dance thing in front of the school. And I think it might be one of the worst uses of CGI I have ever seen. The characters' faces have no emotion while their body is moving in all the wrong ways. I think they had a good idea and it would have had a good execution too if it weren't for the CGI. Even the choreography is fun, or at least the idea of it, and the song is hype but I just can't get over Kirisu's face not moving at all during the whole thing. They do address her lips not moving due to her hate for singing, but it still looks awkward. And besides this, there are some other fun events featuring each character. Kominami-senpai has this badass rock and roll performance with this killer solo, again, playing into her cool personality. And Furuhashi has a play where she has a kiss scene with a male protag, but Naruyuki has to play the male while in a costume and they kiss through the mask. Rizu is doing an udon shop, and that's pretty much it. Finally, the fireworks happen and all of the girl's friends launch the girls at him. Lucky guy. But actually, the fireworks that they just shot up then was a dud and so it doesn't count. But then, the silhouette of a girl picks him up from the ground as the fireworks go off, that girl was... Uruka. So the show ends with Uruka being the primary love interest, so congratulations to her. And before I get any comments of people saying, but in the source material, but in the manga, but in the light novel, but in the live action ad- I don't care what happens in them. <clears throat> All of you classroom of the elite people, I'm talking about the anime. Anyways, after the final credits, we see all of the characters get into the colleges they want and a final interaction between Uruka and Nariyuki. Really, good for them. They all deserve it. But with the show ending, one question is left to be answered. Who is best girl? And this time, you'll get a ranking of them, so let the waifu wars begin. And this will be a ranking about how much I would like them to end up with Nariyuki. The first one I'll rule out, and therefore number 5 on the list, is Kirisu. Now, I do think that she is a good fun character, but I just can't see her as a love interest due to their statuses. The next girl, at 4th place, is unexpectedly Kominami. Now, this is not an insult to her character at all. If not, it might even be a compliment, because I like that they didn't go all romance with her. I like the relationship that they have with her being the cool senpai, so thank you for making her just a friend. At a small, really small, kinda insanely small 143 centimeters, which is about 4'8", Rizu proudly stands her ground on the number 3 spot. Rizu was cute and fun, but I just felt that her bit got a little repetitive. And frankly, Naruyuki and Rizu had the most mundane relationship out of the rest. Coming in close at number 2 
we have the Genki Genki girl herself, Uruka. Uruka has the most fun personality and relationship with Naruyuki out of everyone there. They seem like genuinely good friends and they seem to have a lot of fun together. Not to mention, she can cook, she's spunky, she's strong, I want to be dominated, I mean what? And also, those tan lines. <laughs> but what keeps her from the number one spot is a lack of emotional depth. She is honestly the weakest character in terms of backstory and what the story does with her, but she still has great qualities as a partner. Finally, for the number one spot, drum rolls please, Furuhashi. I just love her character. She is charismatic, sociable, caring, pretty, she just has all the desirable traits in a partner. Honestly, if I had to personally choose one to be with me, I would probably choose her. So maybe there's some bias there, but at the same time, I'm the judge, jury, and executioner here. It is I that has the power. <laughs> so congratulations to the best girl, Furuhashi, for the honor of this glorious title. This was a really fun show with a lot of really good moments in comedy and romance, and though it has its flaws, I still think it to be one of the greatest harems out there. And so there you have it. Now you know a complete online stranger's opinion on Bokuben. It was time well spent though. And if you like this video, YouTube thinks that you might like this one too. Or you can watch this video of me talking about the hit 2023 anime, The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten. My name is Noobo Okoa, Uruka is hot, and thanks for watching.